let the curve is given as a vector value function r of t and for some value of the t we can find a unit tangent vector t and a vector n is going to be a, a normal vector which is going to be perpendicular to this tangent vector and the b normal vector is going to be perpendicular to both of these two vectors so in this video we're going to define the normal vector and the b normal vector and see the conceit and consider an example of calculating them so let's start with an example so let the norm of some vector value function is always a constant for all the values of the t then it's going to be perpendicular to the derivative of this vector so in order to show this what we're going to do is we would like to write down the norm of the r it's going to be in the square sorry it's going to be r dot r right so now this is so i know that this is equal to the constant c right this is given so it's going to be c square and here we have r dot r so let us take the derivative from the boss of the parts it's going to be a derivative of the c square with respect to the t and on the right hand side we're going to have the derivative of the r multiplied to the r plus r multiplied to the derivative of the r as a dot product right so on the left we're going to have a zero because the derivative of a constant is zero and on the right we have t multiplied t multiplied to the r prime dot r right so when we multiply the t vectors as a dot product and when it is equal to the zero we know that they are perpendicular so now so the unit tangent vector is defined as a t of a t, t vector it's going to have a length one always so according to the previous example, if the norm of the vector is always equal to some constant, then this is going to be perpendicular to its derivative, right? So we are going to define the normal vector as the t prime of t, right? So the derivative of the unit tangent vector, it's going to be perpendicular to itself. And I want to normalize this. I would like to make this normal vector to have the length to be equal to the one as well. So that is why I would like to divide this to the length of this vector itself. And we are going to define the B normal vector as a perpendicular to the A and T. And we can obtain this vector by multiplying the unit tangent vector to the unit normal vector as a cross product. So this is going to be B normal vector and this is going to be normal vector. So let's consider an example. So if we're given again a circle helix, so let's, we're given a circle helix using the vector function cosine of t, sine of t, and the t. We would like to find the unit tangent vector, the unit normal vector, and b normal vector for this r. So the unit tangent vector is found by finding the derivative of the r and dividing this to its norm. So let's find the derivative of the r. It's going to be a vector with the three components and each component is obtained by taking the derivative of the components of this vector. It's going to be minus sine, cosine, and one. And the norm of this vector, r prime, it's going to be equal to the square root of t. So the unit tangent vector, it's going to be one divided to the square root of t, to the vector was the components minus sine of t, cosine of t, and 1. So when we need to find the normal vector, we are going to find the derivative of the t and divide this to the norm of this vector. So in this case, it's going to be a unit vector, right? So the derivative of the t, it's going to be the derivative of the components of this vector. It's going to be 1 divided to the square root of t multiplied to the vector. So the first component is going to be minus cosine of t, second component is minus sine of t, and the third component is zero. So when we find the norm of the t prime, so we can take out the constant from the norm, 
it's going to be norm of this vector with the components cosine of t minus sine of t and a zero. So the norm of this vector is going to be one, right? Because this is cosine squared plus sine squared plus zero from the square root, which is one, which is going to be again one divided by the square root of t. So the normal vector it's going to be one divided by the square root of t multiplied to the minus cosine of t minus sine of t and zero divided to the one divided to the square root of t. Right? So in this case we can obtain the normal vector with the components as cosine of t minus sine of t and zero. So when we need to find the binomial vector, we need to multiply the tangent vector to the normal vector as the cross product. So in order to obtain this, what we need to do is we need to write down the i, j, and k to the first row. In, to the second row, we need to copy the components of the unit tangent vector. It's going to be minus sine of t, cosine of t, and 1. So when we need to write down the third row, we need to copy the components of the unit normal vector. It's going to be minus cosine of t, minus sine of t, and 0. So please note that we can take out the 1 divided to the square root of t, which was multiplied to the unit tangent vector outside to the determinant. So when we multiply a constant to the determinant, it is going to be multiplied to only one of the rows. Right? So this is different from multiplication of a constant to the matrix. So now what we need to find the determinant of this matrix by crossing out the i, we can write this as the 1 divided to the square root of t, i multiplied to the matrix with the components cosine of t, 1, minus sine of t, 0, minus, we're going to cross out the row and the column where the j is located and copy out the matrix which is left with the components sine of t, 1, minus cosine of t, 0, plus the k, we're going to cross out the row and the column where the k is located and copy a matrix which is left it is going to be sine of t, cosine of t, minus cosine of t, minus sine of t. So now we just need to find the determinants of the three matrices. It's going to be 1 divided to the square root of t, i multiplied to z, plus sine of t, minus j multiplied to, plus cosine of t, and k multiplied to minus minus, it's going to be plus sine squared, plus cosine squared, which is 1, simply. So it's going to be 1 divided to the square root of t, and a vector with the components sine of t minus cosine of t in 1. This is going to be the b-normal vector.